Here's a fun fact that will 100% make people question what you do in your free time. So you might not know this, but the Peregrine Falcon nearly became past tense in America mostly because they were getting destroyed by the pesticides we were using. In the 70s, the number of Falcon breeding pairs dipped from 4,000 all the way to 324. But they made a comeback, and you're gonna see why that was a pun. And one of the big reasons was thanks to the FFH, the Falcon <laughs> hat. This hat was also a sperm collection device that falconers would wear to collect and artificially inseminate falcons. And yes, they would wear it on their head. But why, you're probably asking. Well, fun fact, when you hand raise a falcon as a chicken and it imprints on you, it grows up and ends up showing zero interest in other falcons, but all the interest in humans. So the only real option was to put on the hat, close their eyes, and question every life decision that led them down the path with the end game of getting sculpted by a bird of prey. And to make it even better, falcons have to be courted before they mate. So not only would these grown men have to put on the cats, they would also imitate the female falcon's chirp and even bow their head in a rocking motion the same way an interested female falcon would. All that so the falcon would be comfortable enough to turn the bucket hat into a bucket hat. These hats come in many different colors. Which means of course so does the falcon. After receiving the falcon's baby batter, the falconer could use a syringe to remove it and then inseminate a female. As much of a meme this whole situation was, it actually helped the falcon population that was previously on life support. But it also means a man had to go home to his wife and children after a long day of being a professional falcon buddy. The more you know. Wait for it. I can explain. Once upon a time I downloaded TikTok as a joke and now I explain stuff like this for a living, ain't that some sh**? So when a lot of baby birds are still in the nest, instead of deucing all over the place, instead they'll dump into a white mucus membrane called a fecal sac. It's basically a built-in diaper for baby birds. And just like in the video, normally as soon as a chick is fed, it'll release a sh** sac for the parent to deal with. Because being a parent literally means dealing with all kinds of sh**. If the chick can't produce a sac on its own, then the mother will poke and prod around its cloaca to stimulate it into dropping its pamper pack. And the reason they do this is because one, keeping all that nastiness in the sack keeps the nest clean. And number two, the cleaner the nest is, the less likely it is that a predator finds it. Now the reason the mother eats it is because baby birds can't digest food completely so they end up leaving a lot of nutrients in their poop. And since nature loves to recycle, oftentimes the parent, usually the mother, will eat the sack so the nutrients at least don't go to waste. So the more you pay attention, the more you realize birds are just really f***ing weird like that. Normally by the time the chicks are ready to fly, they don't need a fecal sack anymore because their systems can handle all the food they normally eat. If I have to know this, so do you. Okay, honest question here, because I'm just curious. Why did y'all tag me so many times? Have we really gotten to that point? You see a pig with sperm while it's heavy enough to have their own gravity, and your first thought was that I needed to see it? Now, I don't know what's worse. The fact that y'all expect me to be able to explain this, or the fact that you're right and I can. Don't judge me for knowing this. This is a boar sus growth and it produces more baby batter than any other animal alive. For reference, a human man can release about 100 million little swimmers in one round. But when this wild pig empties the clip, it can produce about 50. Billion. It literally has sus in its name, that should tell you something. Basically, since male boars compete for females, the more baby batter one can produce, the more likely he's going to be the one that ends up knocking up the female. So to be able to hold more life juice, a male boar's balls will double in size during breeding season. And to give themselves even more of an advantage, a pig's O, you know, you know the, the big O? Yeah, for a pig it can last well over half an hour. In rare cases, a pig can experience 90 minutes of euphoria. Which means after years of character development, we now have pigs with family jewels big enough to pay property taxes for. Which is how a video that can make me feel pain in places I don't want to can exist. So let me ask y'all, are y'all glad y'all know this now? Like, did you really need me to tell you all this? I don't know the saddest thing about this. I barely did any research. For some reason, I already knew most of this. And there is no safe way to explain why. What the actual F dollar dollar hash is this? Yeah, this is real. This is a hammerhead bat. You can find these roid bats seasoned all across Central and West Africa. I ain't even gonna hold you. They do not have the best side profile. In fact, if you remember pictures of a chupacabra that went viral a couple years ago, it was actually a hammerhead bat minding his own business. I can't even blame them because they have one of the most misleading skulls you'll ever see. But this freak of a bat is 100% harmless. Hammerhead bats eat almost nothing but fruits, and their favorites are figs, bananas, and mangoes. And when they do catch bodies, they're usually eating the insects you actually should worry about. And there's actually a reason they look like the face of a malpractice lawsuit. The males use that freakish nose job as a kind of loudspeaker to amplify this weird hawking call that they make to attract females. This half of evolution is just finding creative ways to get laid. You wanna hear it? You can't hear it, but somewhere Batwoman just got turned on. Also, these bats low-key have social anxiety because during stressful events, they'll purposely isolate themselves from the group. It'd be like that. I read a comment that said they're disgustingly adorable and yeah, I see it. 
almost makes up for the fact that sometimes they attack and murk chickens and they might be responsible for Ebola. No, I don't think I will explain it. I'm about to introduce you to your new nightmare. Meet every shark's paralysis demon, the false killer whale. It's actually a type of oceanic dolphin and the biggest ones can grow to 20 feet long and weigh well over 4,000 pounds. Basically, they're dolphins that eat their Wheaties. This aquatic refrigerator usually eats fish and squid, but this waterproof demon will also murk other dolphins. They also do other things to dolphins. Because not only will false killer whales, let's call it tennis. Not only will they play tennis with dolphins of other species, they'll also participate in gay tennis matches. That's actually why you've probably never seen them in an aquarium, because when they're around other dolphins, they'll either fight or another F word that guidelines won't let me say. Also, apparently false killer whales have been known to roll up in squads of five. Hundred. Five hundred. Also, I was not kidding about the tennis thing. Because when a female bottlenose and a male false killer whale play doubles, they can end up making a baby called a wolfin. Even though its name makes it sound like a whale-dolphin hybrid, they're both dolphins. On a wholesome note, this Dollar Tree orca is actually really friendly to people and sometimes they'll approach humans and offer them fish that they already caught. Because they can form friendships with other species, they can often bond and create relationships with humans. Like a just friends relationship. Not whatever the god-fearing this was. But yeah, falsies are friendly. Even though they look like someone tried to recreate dolphins strictly from memory. While on LSD. So I just thought of something and I have no idea if this is true, so I need an expert to tell me if this is facts or not. You remember orcas, right? Of course you do. But let's say an orca was trying to put you on the news and the only way to stop it was to poke it in the eye. If you looked for its eyes in those white spots, you'd be dead. Because an orca's eyes are actually below the white spots right there. So here's my theory. Orcas hunt animals like sea lions that are capable of defending themselves. So those huge eye spots might be to confuse their prey in case they decide to go ahead and gouge the sea panda's eyes out. For some reason, the best example I could come up with is a giant anteater's tail. Giant anteaters have a huge bushy tail. That means if a jaguar tries to run up on them, they might not be able to tell which end is ahead. So having giant white fake eyes with the real eyes under it is basically a form of camouflage that protects this aquatic dolphin from getting blinded. And when you think about it, this low-key makes sense. Sharks will roll their eyes back like the exorcist to protect themselves right before they take a seal off the census. Same idea, different execution. I did no research for this video whatsoever. But if this is true, that means nature really made a maxed out PED murder Oreo and said f*** it, let the rest of the world deal with it. Are you mooing because you want to be one with the cows? So fun fact, tigers have actually learned to imitate the calls of other animals to trick them into feeling safe and letting their guard down. Right before they put them in God's spam folder. Bengal tigers have been recorded mimicking the calls of the sandbar deer before they put them on a shirt. There's also been reports of tigers pretending to be baby linger monkeys so they could turn their parents into a statistic. Or tigers will even imitate the calls of Asiatic black bears just so they can lure them out. Bears obviously fight back. So the tiger will literally ambush it and put its teeth through the bear's windpipe before it even has time to realize what's happening. And yes, for those that didn't know, bears make up a small but very real part of a tiger's diet because they're just G's like that. But by far the worst part is, I just found out that tigers will allegedly mimic the mating calls of the red deer. Meaning a deer can pull up expecting to get laid only to get laid to rest, disrespectfully. Also there's the fact that a tiger's fake call can travel for 5 kilometers or just over 3 miles. Because nature's just a bitch like that, it's only a matter of time before evolution teaches this black and orange obituary how to imitate us. If you're ever having a bad day, google Fleming response and just look through images. Fleming response is when an animal curls back its top lip and exposes its front teeth and gums. An animal will do this when they want to investigate a smell someone else might have left behind. It's like squinting your eyes to see better, but with your nose. In scientific geek terms, because I do accept that about myself, doing this forces a smell into an organ called the vomero nasal organ, or VMO. And the VMO's job is to help an animal detect certain scents or pheromones. For example, rhinos wake up on R. Kelly timing and are attracted to the scent of pee, and the Fleming response helps them follow the scent of liquid gold to help them get laid, and that is a sentence I can guarantee you no one else has ever said. Also, the word Fleming comes from a German verb that means to look spiteful. Because every animal that does it looks either pissed or just disgusted. And some just look straight up possessed. But it's not, it's just an animal's version of smelling in 4K. Only made this video as an excuse to show you all these pictures. I genuinely hope you got as much out of this as I did.